Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about a interesting story. Now there is some question whether or not this is a real story. If you guys remember on Reddit, it was posted about the guy who saw a Muslim being beat up by free white males with the Make America Great hats. That turned out to be a lie because the weapon in question, the guy clearly did not use or he, he had no idea how it didn't work. It was verified that it was false and he had done that for virtual signaling and points. Now this story seems a little bit more realistic, A, because it doesn't involve weapons that suit projectiles that the person telling the story is lying about, and B, it's not like over the top, right? It's not like free huge dudes with Make America Great beating up a Muslim. Um, mm, that seems like, okay, that's probably not going to happen. And given the guy, the guy was like a skinny, probably five foot two dude, probably not going to step in and help. Here, you know, is this sto story real? It really got me to thinking of, you know, who else supports the Boros Legion in the past? Because there used to be the... The whole point of Ravnica was you support your guild and everyone supports their guilds and you find your guild and you have a pin, you buy the t-shirt, you have the sleeves, you have the playmat. So this symbol is literally everywhere uh, because Boros was one of the 10 guilds and it was probably top four most popular guilds. So when I look at this, uh, I did a little research and I did find some very interesting people who are Boros supporters. Now, does that mean they're racist or fascist? No, it just means that they like that type of fantasy, I guess. Is this story true? Is it not true? I don't think it really matters. I think it's just a great discussion to have because even if not true, I could see it. I could see someone wearing a t-shirt at a, at a supermarket or ACB and the symbol does not look great. Uh, it is a white fist clenched pointing at the sky with fire around it. It does have connotations that this could be a white power symbol, a white supremacist symbol of some type, um, or a, a group, maybe a, um, smaller group that is supporting white power uh, so people got tattoos of it they have pins they have collectible items this this symbol appears on every boros foil uh does it appear on the regular foil? i think it appears in the regular cards now too but i remember the original ravnica wow the foils look really great uh for these symbols they appear in the reaper i mean Clearly, this is a symbol that Wizard of the Coast designed uh, a while ago, and now they might have to take it back. Uh, they they are not the only game with a fantasy element that is very militistic, uh, police oriented, and you throw on top of it that Boros is kind of a police state. Um, they do have images of them beating goblins and people and arresting them. A lot of the images relating to Boros are them arresting, or the instants and sorceries, I mean, or, or enchantments, are them arresting or beating or shooting fire at essentially criminals. Supposed criminals. Uh, the tattoo comment definitely gave me a, <laughs> a good laugh because, yeah, I guess you could fill it in in black and that would help the situation if you were white male but would it really help or i i mean it's uh so anyway i wanted to know okay so now that i've researched the boros legion and i found them to be a fascist police state what type of people in magic the gathering support boros and i found them trick mtg at Ashlyn Rose, which is a, uh, Ashlyn Rose is a white female cosplayer. Boros with me and MTG Lee. Lee Sharp, we all know Lee Sharp is the, he only wants to hire non-white cis male. Like, he does not want to hire that category. He wants to hire just women 
He wants to be surrounded with women developers is Lee Sharp's uh, dream. And, oh, wow, he found a uh, woman here. Uh, Boris Guild, best guild, join us, Ashlyn. Okay, so the Boris Guild is a police state guild, a fascist guild, and they believe in stamping out any diversity. So these are three white people talking to each other. Two of them who work at Wizards of the Coast, and they're suggesting to a third white female that she should join the Boros Guild. Lee Sharp, Boros Legionnaire, him, okay, he, him, digital product manager, game designer for MTG Arena, Minister of Red Maids Propaganda. Minister of Red Maids Propaganda. It sounds like something that the KKK would have. They would probably have a Minister of the Red Mages Propaganda Department. Now, should the interesting thing be actually a joke? Uh, and I think a lot of people want to get in on the virtual signaling now. There, there's a lot of points to be gained. Efro, who by all intents and purposes is either very naive or actually in, unintentionally racist, um, he's the one who started this thing off. Um, if you don't remember, he was the one who was asking to support a African-American artist. And then the discovery was there was only one of them. And the, when we asked the one African-American artist, have you heard of any more? He said, it's either just me or it's rumored that there's possibly four of us out of the tens of thousands of artists that have worked on magic-related products in the years. That doesn't sound good. And then we looked at the research and development and play design team, and there were no African-Americans there either. Then we looked at the development team. There were no af So, like, Efro started it off, and now he is... Magic the Gathering cosplayers are Magic the Gathering content creators. Our, no, Magic the Gathering creators. He doesn't say content creators. I feel that in myself. This is a very strange... Uh, Magic has always been a very segregated... Um, it reminds me of the economy of what Skyrim... Not Skyrim. There used to be this spaceship game that was very popular. I want to say like Eve or some. Something sounded like that, where people sold their ships for a lot of money online on eBay. Uh, this was before eBay. You know, this was when eBay allowed you to do something like that. And when they sold these ships on eBay, um, they would, you know, trade, sell, and it would be real cash, like real cash, like hundreds of thousands of dollars would go into one ship. And that was a micro economy. So you could learn a lot about economics via manipulating this um, environment. And World of Warcraft had something very similar with a virus. You could see that just like the current virus today, that there are people, um, and they tend to be younger, they tend to be newer players with less to lose, who go out and their sole goal is to intentionally spread the virus, which is exactly what's happening today. And I would, uh, it's, it's a fantastic read. Um, because what happened was every new new to newer player who didn't have as much gold or equipment, I think the virus would de-equip you or something, uh, would th they started this new game of how many people can I infect? And then you just had small pockets of, you know, just actual friends, like people that you know in real life that you can trust in real life, because other than that, you would be betrayed by some online person. And I remember um, a article about how like some people would pretend to be females, which they already did in WoW, but to infiltrate these small, uncontaminated pockets of people. And then obviously it was a male, and then boom, they got all got contaminated. So that was what WoW was for about 60 days before they fixed the bug, which was the virus. And now you look at today, uh, I live in Texas, I live in Houston. Obviously, we, a lot of young people don't give a blank. Um, they're going to bars and restaurants and infecting their grandmothers. They don't really care. They just want to go back to living. And honestly, they don't have jobs, so it's not like they have very much to lose. Uh, well, what, I, what happened in World of Warcraft was identical to what's happening today. 
on a bigger scale. So um, in Magic the Gathering, it's the same thing. Our little niche community, a lot of things that happen in it, are, it's very interesting because, especially for me, I can have a bigger voice. Obviously, you know, like when you're in a smaller community and there's less people, then what you do, it has a bigger impact and you can see what the effects are. So the psychology behind uh, Noah, I mean, Noah Bradley came out of nowhere on a Saturday morning to apologize. And it's like, whoa, what's going on here? He just kind of, and that's the proof, right? People want to say, where's the proof? Well, can I see some proof that no, I mean, Noah himself, his apology, public apology is the proof. I don't think an innocent person would publicly apologize like this, right? I mean, it would be pretty crazy to think that this was a, a ploy to get more clout because immediately Monday, Wizard Coast says, no mass, no, no, no mass. Bye, guys.